Sleep on greater. This is the Burn Filter Podcast. This is King Dank. I'm the host of the Burn Filter Podcast. This is my first podcast, so I'm nervous as shit. But we're going to get through this, and we're going to do it like G's. I'm going to talk about everything in this podcast. There is no subject that is taboo or too taboo for the king, you know. And I call this the Burn Filter Podcast because my, my filter is burnt all the way 100% burnt and but we're gonna give you intelligent perspectives you know life experiences you know and get used to this podcast thing because this is like my first time the lights are hot up in here you know what I'm saying and (laughs) the microphone is in my face but you know this is going to be the first of many podcasts for me so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about different subjects we're gonna talk about music we're gonna talk about sports we're gonna talk about men women women a lot you know i mean we're gonna talk about a lot of things i got guests who are going to be you know high profile maybe some low profiles you know we're just gonna have everybody on i'm gonna just anybody i feel they spirit i feel like they real i feel like they you know have something to add you know Mentally, emotionally, whatever it is, you know, I feel like a different people have different things to add in life and you can get things from different people, you know, and different perspectives in life and, you know, and you can learn and you can grow from them things. And that's how I feel about, you know, people, you know, can't listen to everybody, but you can listen to the king because the king is always going to steer you the right way. I promise you. So um, how I got into this podcast thing was, you know, guru, shout out to guru. You know, Guru Speaks, I was on his podcast like a year and a half ago. He like introduced me to this thing and like I fell in love with the microphone. Like I was like, okay, I know I can do this. This is, this is something I know I can get with. And so Guru, I appreciate you, you know, um, I appreciate what you did for me. You didn't have to have me on your podcast, but you believed in me and I I appreciate that. Um, Shout out to my peoples, Um, all my peoples. On the West Coast, back home in Pacoima, you know, um, Roro, I love you, bro. You know, my boys in Phoenix, Arizona, you know, hey, SC, what up, bro? Um, my boys in Texas, my boy Jay, <laughs> my boy Jay, all right, uh, my boy Cuzzo, um, I appreciate y'all, I love y'all, you know, <laughs> my Mexican partners in Phoenix, I love y'all too. Um, I see a couple people that came out to watch my little podcast. Uh, I appreciate Omari for coming. Oh, I appreciate you. That's a young king right there. And I appreciate you. That's a young king right there. You know, both of them brothers I respect and I have admiration for because, you know, you know, I've watched these two men grow, especially one of them. And um, so I appreciate everybody that's, you know, gave me so much support into doing this and felt like I would be successful at it. So we're going to see what's up. We're going to see how it's popping off. And, you know, we're going to take it to another level if we can. So I'm going to stop right here, you know, and take a break and then, you know, come back. So we'll, we'll be back after this uh, small break and uh, y'all just keep cooling. And we're going to come back. So we back. And, you know, I'm going to talk about what's on my mind today. You know, the first show, I didn't really want to get too deep or nothing like that. I really didn't want to, you know, talk about nothing too, you know, off into some kind of bad place. But, you know, I'm going to talk about race today. I'm gonna, For this segment, I'm going to talk about race. And I'm going to talk about police brutality in race 
And you know what? What sickens me about the police is how undereducated they are. They come into our communities. They talk down to us. They talk to us like they're so educated and you better listen to them because they're the big, bad police and they know what they're talking about. But half of these cats don't even have the education to get out of a third grade class because, I mean, it's really ridiculous. You don't even have to have an, uh, a, a simple AA degree to be a cop, you know. So that's why most of them are pigs, you know what I'm saying? So listen, you know. I think that if you made it harder to be a cop, make a, make a minimum requirement to have at least a college education, a, a, a degree, I think, you, I think that would stop a lot of bullshit from happening. I really do. Because that would stop a lot of them from being cops, period. They wouldn't even be cops if they had to have a, a college education. That they would stop, uh, like 70% of them would not even be cops. So you probably have a lot less police brutality. You know, you probably have those cops out there who, who do have understanding and knowledge of time, place, and situation. I mean, it's getting ridiculous out here how, you know, simply getting pulled over because you're black. It doesn't matter who you are. Turns into a situation where you could lose your life. I mean, and that's been happening for forever. I mean, the narrative out there is that white people are scared of black people. And if any black person believes that, we are fools completely because that's not right. If they're scared of us, then we done miss something. Because I'm looking at the scoreboard. The scoreboard says about a million to zero. I mean, how many people have we enslaved? How many segregation laws have we inflicted? Dogs, water hoses, just random killings. All up until two weeks ago, last week. And they just keep doing it and telling us it's us. Over and over. They keep telling us it's us. And I don't get it. Oh, you! I killed you because of you. All you did was have a cell phone behind, but by your head. I killed you because of a cell phone. You should have got down when I told you to. Come on. These are egotistical people who probably grew up just hoping to be in, in authority of anything they could. Now they're in authority and they feel like Billy Bat. And they, all they do is, hey, black people out of line, you lose your life. And all they tell them is, is it's our fault. They've been telling us it's our fault since the beginning of time. It's our fault they enslaved us. This is our fault we had segregation. It's been our fault since the beginning of time. That is disgusting. And for all you sellouts that believe it, you disgust me 100%. I promise you. So, you know, I really didn't want to go here on the first one, but man, you know what? That's all that's been going on. It's racial, 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 racial. And, you know, it's it's a subject that needs to be talked about, you know, and I don't care what how people feel about what I'm saying. I don't care if a pig feels bad about what I'm saying and how I'm just this, hey, man, get it right. Get it right. You know, I mean, or... I just feel people should not not listen to what people say and look at what they're doing. It's not about what they say. It's about their actions. And their actions are telling us, hey, we hate you niggas. We hate you niggas. And we're going to kill every last one of you if we can. Look at what they, the narratives they control. They control social media. They control everything on TV. Look at the narratives they're putting out there. They put, they, I've never seen, I've almost never seen a white man in a dress in my life, except for maybe one, but I can name countless brothers who's been in dresses, countless. This is a narrative they're putting out there. They're scared of us and they portray us in a light that's, but when they portray themselves, they're an authority. They're in a, a position of power every time. You know, so I'm not going to say everything I want to say about race in this little segment, but I had to do this little segment for the racial thing because 
I'm just tired of the narratives getting put out there and I'm tired of our people believing it. I'm tired of that. I mean, it's disgusting at the end of the day. You know, you believe it all you want to. You're blind to the facts. Look at the scoreboard. They hate us. And if you run to the ones that hate us, well, you're a part of the ones that hate us. So, you know, that's all I had to say about that. And that's I'm going to finish the segment with that and come back a little later and get into something more fun and more upbeat and more happy, hopefully. <laughs> so I'll be back in a minute. We're back. King Dank, the Burn Fitzer podcast. You know, the last segment I got a little racial out there, you know, and that probably is going to happen again several times, <laughs> messing with me and talking to me and having conversations with me. But right now we're going to get into something a little lighter, a little bit more, you know, upbeat. We're going to talk about some entertainment, you know, entertainment topics. Um, you know, First of all, I want everybody to know I am a humongous Laker fan. Everybody that knows me knows that the royal purple and gold is, you know, supreme to everyone. And I hope everybody knows that. Uh, I'm a huge Dodger fan. Yes, I said it. Oh, I'm a huge Dodger fan. Um, you know, how we're going to go back to back this year. You know that. Um, I'm a Raiders fan, though. And if anybody got something bad to say about the Raiders at any point, hit me up. It's all good. I mean, we could go at it, you know, I mean, but don't get disrespectful, you know, don't be behind your computer talking all that wolf and all that wolfy wolf wolf. Okay. Don't do the wolfy. Okay. We just talk, but you got something bad to say about the Raiders? Holla at me. Holla at me. The King is ready for that. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, so those are my squads. I love my squads without a doubt. You know what I'm saying? I love most sports, I played sports. Um, I done been through everything in life. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing probably I ain't ever been through in life. So, you know, that right there alone puts me in a position to talk about a lot of things on this podcast, especially sports. Okay. Now, I know there's a lot of people um, out there who um, think that LeBron James is the best basketball player to ever live. And I'm here to tell you, you're wrong. You're all wrong. That is not the truth. He's not the best basketball player to ever live. At this point, he's not. Now, after his career is over, maybe, maybe, maybe. There's a possibility. But at this point in time, I cannot give him that crown because there are several names out there that have better resumes than LeBron. So I just want to put that out there, even though he's a Laker right now. I mean, but he, you know, is he one of us? I don't know. You know, I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel that way, but I have a hard time saying LeBron is better than Kobe. I really do. I have a problem with that. It's just something's wrong with that. Maybe y'all didn't see what Kobe did. Because he ripped it. I mean, God, Jesus. I don't know, almost never seen an attack like that on the NBA except for Shaq. <laughs> I mean, good Lord. But um, that's for all you LeBron lovers out there. Yeah, and there's probably one in this room that I know about. And I'm <laughs> sorry to break your heart, bro. Sorry. But he's not the best right now. I'm sorry about that. But um, so, I mean, if any of y'all like soccer, you know, don't talk to me. Because, you know, listen, soccer is very boring to me and I can't deal with it. Um, I just, I, the games are five hours. I don't understand the, um, what's that rule? That rule, um, the the offsides rule. I don't get it. It's, it doesn't look offsides to me. But it is. They like, listen, I done tried. World Cup, all that mess. Mm, can't deal with the soccer. WNBA, I like some WNBA. I really do. I think they should be on the come up. I think that maybe don't don't deserve the revenue that they want right now. But as the game expands and the players get better, because they do, I do think that they deserve to get paid. Just like NFL Cats. NFL Cats, I think that they're underpaid. 
Your body is your business, and that's not a contact sport. That's a collision sport. You could lose your life on that field. And to disrespect a man out there that probably has a concussion after every play and say, oh, you know, you're only worth this. Your body's only worth this much. Because no NFL contract, there's not a lot of NFL contracts that are guaranteed. Like, if you're not Aaron Rodgers, you're not Tom Brady, you know, a couple other players that are high profile, if you that offensive lineman on the practice squad, you don't have no guaranteed contract. Shoot, if your contract say it's like $2 million, that ain't guaranteed you get that. You better That's a bonus contract. You better play for your, for your money. And to undercut those dues on pay is uh, disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? These cats, when they retire, they barely had a pension plan. These cats walk around vegetables. <laughs> These cats, vegetables, can't even think. You know, so can't bear bodies is toe up, can't even move, and you don't want to help them. That's just like that reminds me of back in the day when our brothers and sisters, especially our brothers back in the day, uh, in the 60s and 70s, went to Vietnam and then they came back. You know, they came back with drug problems, they came back with just, just nothing, and the government wasn't helping them at all. You know what I'm saying? They fought for this country and they was out there on drugs, in the street, didn't have a home, didn't have anything. And we're talking about veterans. And now if you go to the military, the you know, the advancements are so much better these days if you go to the military. But back in the day, they wasn't getting nothing. You know, they weren't getting a damn thing. So, you know, the NFL cats, I think they deserve more pay. Definitely deserve more pay. And I hope every one of them break the bank on that ass because it's not for long at all. Not for long at all. And they don't give a damn about you. It's like a meat factory. So, brothers, break the bank on their ass. That's what I say every time. Every chance you get, break the bank on their ass. Because they certainly don't give a damn about you. Um, what else? Hockey. Okay. Um... When the Kings are good, when the L.A. Kings are good, I'll watch hockey. But other than that, I'm sorry. There's only like one brother out there, and I just can't be watching it. I'm sorry. It just looks like a snowfall. It's just like, what in the world? And them names I can't even pronounce. So, hey, hockey's out. You know, I'll go to a game, and, you know, it's exciting, but... Watch it on a regular basis? Nah, I ain't watching no hockey. You know what I'm saying? That's that's out, brothers. You know what I'm saying? You brothers that watch hockey on a regular basis, I um I pray that everything's okay for you. Um anyway, um what else? So yeah, there 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 I am with you know my teams, you know how I feel about all the sports. Um if you have problems with any of those things, you know, we can talk about it. Hey, listen, it's open conversation with me all day with anything. So if y'all got a problem with the Raiders, let me know. Get at me. You know, get at me. I I gladly go back and forth with you about the Raiders. Don't ever disrespect the Raiders. I know somebody in here who has done that. And I'm really not happy about that but i'm gonna take another break come back talk some more shit you know whatever's on my mind and um you know we'll holler at you in a minute all right yo what's good we back i got i got one of my topic guys with me i got my topic guy you know this this one always has interesting subjects for me to talk about and w what happens is he brings up subjects and I give my opinions on them. And that's how we crack this thing off. So I want to introduce y'all to my topic guy, one of one of the few of them that I have. And introduce yourself to everybody, brother. And I go by gift. I'm here to throw gasoline on the fire. <laughs> I'm here to get conversations. 
burning and I'm also here to sauce things up and cause controversy. I might not always agree with him. He might not always agree with me. Right. But that makes for a good discussion, right? Absolutely. And uh, we're going to treat this just like we conversating without the cameras. But we're going to keep it on a G we're gonna level. We're going to keep the cameras on. Yeah, we're, we're going to keep, keep it on a G level we, every time. It's going to be just like we conversating yeah, right like outside the, the house. Yeah, yeah, like we had like the shop. Effortless, yeah. right? Yeah, all, all day, all day. That's my shit right there. So, I mean, where you from, bro? I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like you, um, I got a lot of partners from Detroit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Detroit's one of my one of my favorite spots, you know, in the Midwest yeah. for, you know, the community. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The togetherness that, that's happening over there in Detroit, you know, yeah. like Chicago and shit like that, you know. So, what was it, what is it like growing up in Detroit? What was it like for you? Well, for me, I grew up playing ball. Yeah. You know. Yeah. To um, honestly stay out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know? And then, honestly, you know, growing up where I grew up, it wasn't much to do. Yeah. You know, so I played ball. That was something to turn to to keep myself busy, stay yeah. occupied. Uh, got to a certain age, developed that competitive spirit. Mm hmm And uh, that was my first passion. I dig that. I yeah. did that. And so what, what What made you uh, come out to Florida, bro? Well, that's easy, the weather. <laughs> you know? It's cold out yeah, there, bro. It's freezing oh, out there. Oh, my God. Especially around them lakes. Yeah. Yeah, dog. Yeah. yeah, dog. So is there anything that you want people to know about you and, and about this podcast and your role in it? and how you get down and your thought processes on things. Kind of like I was alluding to earlier, I'm here to source up the conversation and give, give my real viewpoint, perspective, opinion on things. And that's the point of the podcast. Yeah, I, want, I, want, I want people who come on here, I want you, I want myself to feel like you can speak your mind comfortably mm. and don't sugarcoat. Yeah, that's real. You don't have to offend everybody. You can... You can angle your conversation and your words a certain way, but speak your mind. Mm -hmm. That's what we got this platform for. And uh, I want to get the wheels turning in people's mind. You can. You got anything to turn wheels right now? We'll keep it real simple. Okay. You well, know, health is wealth, right? Yeah, absolutely. So speak about Marcus Aldrich with the uh, rhythmias, oh. heart problems, okay. recent retirement, okay. and uh, Black Rob, okay. kidney issues. Absolutely. Rest in peace. Absolutely. We, we as black men... We have to watch our health more than anybody, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, the leading cause of death amongst black men a certain age is colon cancer. Mm -hmm. So we got to watch what we eat. Dairy products are not good for us. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that, bro. The, what we put in our body is very important, to, especially black men, because we tend to die from anything under the sun. When we mm -hmm. go outside, we could die from the bullet. We go, we go, we going to die from pork. We go, you know what I'm saying? So the thing about us is we got to be really careful you know what i'm saying as black men about our consumption about what we feed ourselves mentally emotionally and physically so i, I dig that health stuff black rob looked like man unbelievable i just was like that's black rob i mean it's not like too far-fetched but it's like how did this happen yeah. You know, how do we allow this to happen? You know yeah. what I'm saying? What do you think we should do about that in the, in the hip hop community? I mean, first and foremost, we've got to look at these two brothers and uh, the health conditions yeah. that they've uh, experienced and realize that money's important, but yeah. number one is health. Absolutely. And uh, we got to take care of ourselves. Yeah. And speaking of what you were saying, uh, we got to realize we're already at a genetic predisposition. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and uh, yeah. we can get deep on that For another sure. day. For sure. But we have to watch what we eat, watch mm -hmm. what we consume, watch what we feed our bodies, watch mm -hmm. what we feed our minds, yeah, absolutely. and take care of ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, money can't buy a life. Real talk. Real talk. I mean, you know, in the day and age we live in, bro, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going to speak on that in my last segment, sort of. You know, um, people put so much emphasis on possessions and physical possessions you know what i'm saying and it's so much so like if you don't have possessions people tend to be like you know or if you don't have those requisite possessions that people feel like you should have or whatever they 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 
I don't know. I don't know what their uh, what their deal is with that these days. But they're putting a lot of emphasis on money, and you know, money you needed to live, you needed to live, and you should get it as much as you can every day. But if that's your sole purpose in life about how you live, then you know, I feel that's a that's a void person, you know, hollow inside. How you feel about that? I mean, I agree. And uh, just think about it from a simple standpoint. It does take money to live. Absolutely. And like even with, with diet, it yeah. takes money to eat well, right? Yeah. But in Black Rob's case, you know, the question begs, was he eating well? Mm. Was he using his money right to eat well? Was he taking care of himself? Mm. You know, was he using his money to really promote his own health? Does he have any money to do that? That too. Is Puff, was Puff robbing his ass? Um, you see, you start off somewhere and you go down the rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. But we, we gotta we gotta take care of ourselves with the resources we got. Mm, for sure, for sure. I mean, we have to understand the resources we have to take care of ourselves, and we have to be educated in those things because a lot of our people, that's that's the number one thing, education. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us are just not educated on certain subjects. I mean, I'm gonna tell you, education over entertainment. All day. All day. I agree with that. I agree with that. So we about to close this segment out. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to have you on the show quite a bit. You know what I'm saying? Because I love how the back and forth with us goes and the conversations. You know what I'm saying? Um, do you have any anything to close with that you want to that you want to leave with, brother? I appreciate it, King. Yeah, I dig that. I dig that. Why? all day all day you know so listen um i'm gonna close out this segment um and i'm gonna come back to y'all and i'm gonna do my closing segment and uh you know i'm gonna go back getting deep on y'all again but it's gonna be all love so we'll be right back oh so we back this is king dank uh this is the burn filter podcast and you know we just shooting the shit chopping it up you know that's how i do it that's how i'm gonna do this podcast i'm not going to you know be more than you know what i'm i'm not um i'm not uh you know a, a top-notch interviewer but i am the shit you know and we you know we're gonna talk about what is the shit and in this segment i'm gonna talk about i'm and this is my last segment for this show like I said, I'm going to keep it light. I know I got a little serious. I got a little funny. I didn't went up and down with emotions in this episode on this first one. But um, on this one, I'm going to get I'm going to get right down to it. Um, this segment, I'm going to talk about character and I'm going to talk about rich moral character. And I'm glad that the homie came on in the last segment and was talking about, you know, the emphasis on people with money and that's all they have. And that's all that they're putting life on is money and possessions, things that perish, you know, and I want to talk to the brothers and sisters who are rich in moral character. Um, I feel like if you're rich in moral character, you are an excellent human being. You know, and always take pride in being a rich moral character per person. You know, some of us are wealthy in character and I consider myself to be wealthy in character. And the people who really know me know that my character is a one spot on and I don't deal with nothing less than that. Um, so the next time, brothers and sisters, you run across somebody who's talking about what you ain't got. You ain't got this. You ain't that. You ain't that. Take pride. Look at yourself, evaluate that person, and look at then look at yourself. And if you have, if you're rich in character, take comfort in that. Take pride in being a rich or wealthy character person, because in the Bible it says the meek shall inherit the earth. You know, not the rich, not the person who's just always about money, 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 money. If you let money rule you, and you let if you're doing things for money and not for you know, from your heart and from your soul and doing things that are going to feed you mentally and emotionally and carry you into the next life, you know, with that good moral character, then you're losing, you know. So, it, brothers and sisters, don't fall into the traps of the money and that 
Don't let it rule you in any way, you know. Make as much of it as you can. <laughs> That's for sure, because you need it to live. And I say get as much money as you can in this lifetime, but don't make that the, the main thing of your life. Don't ever make that the main thing in your life, because money is the root of all evil. And we see that every day, you know. So stay good in character. Stay wealthy in character. Stay great in character. Be a great character person, you know. And when you run across not so great character people, they're going to show you. They're going to show you what time it is. Because let me tell you something. <clears throat> when a person shows you who they are, believe them the first time. When a person shows you who they are, believe who they are the very first time that they show it to you. I got that from Maya Angelou. Shout out to Maya Angelou. You know, she was a great woman, a great poet. And but her poetry was so deep and real, you know, and I um that quote stood out to me and I had to say that on this show today because you know, we talk about character and all I deal with is character, good character, wealthy character. You know, so everybody you ever see around me, you know, I believe they got good character, wealthy character. So stay great in characters, brothers and sisters, you know, and until next time, because I'm going to end it, you know, I'm just going to stop right here. I'm going to drop the mic. And until next time, you know, which should be next week, I hopefully I'm going to have a guest and, you know, I'm going to say peace for now. 100. <laughs> Sleep pound greater.